they are the Jets of the West. They are definitely not sexy. I'm kind of, I feel like very bland and I wish I was wearing like a brown shirt. You're listening to Let's Talk Fantasy Football, where men of fantasy genius have realized. Hey guys, we don't need real football skills to dominate on the fantasy field. So slap on your pads and grab your helmet. Shit's about to get real. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another edition of Let's Talk Fantasy Football. Um, If you are a repeat listener and you've listened to us before, you already know you're in trouble because I am your host, the D-O-N, and if I'm here as the host, that must mean it's the Voncast with your favorite, Vinny Gonzalez. Vin, how are you doing, man? Dude, I'm doing so great. It's just uh, a pleasure to be here. Didn't know if it was going to happen tonight, but through all the technical issues and pure will, we are here. If this was a flight, we would have missed it. Oh, 100%. Or it would have been delayed like three hours, and then you have to drive there. And then we would have had to sleep over because the, there was like a failure in the AC unit of the airplane. <laughs> Truly fucking awful. We can't even see you. We're just doing audio right now because we've had so many issues, but we're going to power through for the AFC West podcast. That's right. We are here with the AFC West. Before we start going, though, uh, I'd like to just go with a little sponsor message that we have here from Auction Draft. So if you're looking for a new home for your auction league or possibly looking to play for the first time, Auction Draft is the best site for running your fantasy football auction league in 2018. They're LTFF approved, and you can sign up now and get on the list for launch by going to letstalkfantasyfootball.com backslash auction draft. Um, also, use a promo code for Let's Talk Fantasy Football because we hold uh, quite a bit of weight with these guys here. We don't give you just 5 or 10%. We get you 25% off of your league. So go check them out. They're great. Um, other than that, Vin, are you ready to uh, dip those toes into the AFC West, into the nice Pacific uh, water Yes, here? man, finally. Let's, let's do this thing. All right, man. Let's start off hot with the Denver Broncos. We got a lot of uh, change going on this year, starting – at the quarterback position itself, uh, Case Keenum, man. Um, let's get rock and roll, Vin. What do you think, dude? I think it's a good ad. I mean, uh, John Ellie seems to know what the fuck he's doing. He gets good quarterback play, at least, you know, decent quarterback play out of what they've been able to do without, like, high-caliber guys. So this is definitely an upgrade from Simeon and Brock, who both uh, took a walk this season. So Case Keenum coming in, obviously he's a journeyman, but had his best season with the Vikings last year. Um, so I think it's an upgrade for the Broncos. I just, their offense hasn't been very trustworthy as of late. It's been like very subpar and they haven't been, uh, really up to the standards in fantasy, been pretty inconsistent. So I hope Keenum brings some sort of, uh, balance here. And I think he will. I just don't know if it's going to be, um, that fantasy, like it's not going to be a fantasy gold mine. I don't think, I think they'll all have their games. Obviously, we're going to go through everybody here, but hopefully Keenum makes uh, these guys have you know more than half the season will be playable for everybody. So hopefully they're, they're, it's an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely going to be more of an upgrade for uh, the players around. I, I don't know if Case Keenum is going to be really an option for you um, in a draft unless you're in a, like a two-quarterback league. Uh, his ADP in a 12-team PPR based off of a fantasy football calculator is <laughs> – 23rd um i mean which i actually you know i I was kind of surprised at first but then looking at the list i mean this is a pretty stout year for quarterbacks um just a few names to go ahead of him uh starting from like 18 would be Derek carr then marcus mariota dak prescott alex smith eli manning the only one behind him really is mitch trubisky so he finished 14th overall i I looked that up after over a half point ppr league because i didn't get the couldn't find it off of full point PPR. Um, so that would slink him down just a little bit. But I mean, either way, I mean, I don't think anyone's really looking to go after Case Keenum unless it's like a two QB league and you're, you're kind of getting, you're stuck with like a late round second quarterback because you went for some bigger guys ahead of it. So, um, I don't really, uh, I don't know if there's really much more we really need to talk on Case Keenum, especially this early. Um, but I think he definitely brings more value to his, uh, like his wide receivers this year, which we saw a major decrease from last year, especially Demarius Thomas, who fell short of a thousand yards for the first time since 2011. Yeah, um, 
Let's we could just talk about them together. Actually, you know, just um, they both severely disappointed. Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, both did really poorly. I guess Demarius Thomas didn't have a completely bad year. He finished with eighty three catches. He said just under a thousand yards and five touchdowns. So it's pretty mediocre stuff when you're looking at the grand scheme of fantasy and where he was expected to be performing at and like that elite level. But uh, now he's going at four four seven um, seventh in the fourth round right now with. Uh, our usual let's t- um not let's talk <laughs> fantasy football calculator ADP twelve teams PPR so um I don't know is I think it's a little I think it's a round later than he was last year which I think is us correcting where he should go and I think he might even go later in drafts than uh, four point seven so yeah I mean um I grabbed a few guys that go ahead of him and before him um starting with like the round before is Larry Fitz, T.Y., Stefan Diggs, and Allen Robinson. These are the guys that are going ahead of him. And right after him is Juju – and literally right after him, uh, the eighth pick, ninth pick is Juju Smith-Schuster, Amari Cooper, and then you see Alshon Jeffrey, Golden Tate, Brandon Cooks like right behind him. Um, I, I don't know. I mean that's kind of a coin toss, man, uh, on where you're going with a lot of these guys. Uh, there's some I think I'd like a little bit better, and there's some that I feel like Demarius Thomas. I yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Who can we name game out of this? Like, uh, sure. I mean, we could just hit some of these guys that are are, are be, you know, behind him, I guess, or we can uh, ahead of him. You know, Larry Fitzgerald or T. Y. Hillen. Do you, uh, I don't know about obviously, but I might be more willing to take a. Well, it's riskier to take T. Y. But the ceiling is way higher with you know the luck injury, obviously. So I think I'd go T. Y. over Thomas for sure. So I think that's correct. Mm-hmm. And then, what about Diggs and Allen Robinson? Those are the two, mm, two guys. Yeah, I think I take both of them guys. too. And you know, we were talking on the other podcast, me and Walsh, about how Robinson's pretty risky when you kind of think about it. But he's you know the inherent number one. Uh, new situation yeah. for both these guys, Thomas and uh, Robinson. So I don't know. Thomas has been kind of falling off. So I think I would go Robinson there just as like a risk reward kind of deal. Cool. Um, right behind. I, I think that's fair. Um, I, I don't know how sold I am on Mitch Trubisky, but also I don't really know how sold I am with a Case Keenum, Demaryius Thomas. Demaryius Thomas, is, is, I mean, he's been showing decline for the past few years. Obviously, he's not in the Peyton Manning offense, right? So we obviously can expect that. But, I mean, he really has been, like, slowly declining every single year. Um, so you got to take that for granted. He's not a young guy. He's, he's starting to see uh, father time a little bit, especially being a receiver at 31. So, uh, But behind him is uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Then Amari Cooper, Alshon Jeffrey, Golden Tate, and Brandon Cooks. Um, for me, I definitely like I do not Thomas better than all. Golden Tate. I would much um, rather have Golden Tate, who's going to see like probably anywhere from eighty to you know ninety plus catches. So I would definitely take him over Demarius Thomas. Uh, I hate Juju, what even about though Juju he's Smith like Schuster? awesome as a person. I just I can't stand him. <laughs> I, I like Juju. I think he's. Uh, I think he's. I think he's. Uh, he hurt my man, perfect uh, dude, standing over him. Option. What did perfect do to anybody? <laughs> your your man, perfect. What is he? What is he? He's a great middle linebacker, linebacker when he's not suspended and playing and stuff. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, still think, think yeah, so, Juju. So two, I'd probably take Juju. Here. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, Amari Cooper? I, I don't necessarily Jeffrey? want any of those guys. But uh, if I had to rank Cooper, Thomas, okay. and Jeffrey, I think I would rank them Cooper, Jeffrey, Thomas. I think I'd rather – yeah, I don't, I don't like the – like what's Thomas' ceiling with Case Keenum? It's – you know, he can be good some weeks, and I think just that's his ceiling. He'll be good. I don't know if there's like some kind of elite fantasy level that he can reach this year. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know. I think uh, Keenum's going to pan out a little bit more for Manuel Sanders, which we'll hit in a second. But uh, one other one is Brandon Cooks, man. I think that's an, actually an interesting comparison. What do you What do you think? Uh, I you would. That's probably where Cooks I would take for, DT, uh, uh, just because he'd have more of a safer 
C for floor, I think. Um, I just I don't know how Cooks is going to integrate into that offense. Probably really well, but I just don't know. Uh, he'll just be super boom or bust for me, and I hate that. I hate those kind of players, and I sometimes I pay for it in drafts, but is, I'd rather have a steadier guy than someone who could disappear in a couple games despite being like you know a high level talent like Cooks. Exactly. Consistency, man. It's what I like. Um, I I will say that I think Brandon Cooks will finish with more fantasy points, but it's going to be very boom or bust where he's going to put up like a shit ton of points like a few weeks and then have like no points for you. So I think Demaryius Thomas will be the safer, more consistent, like you said, where you're going to have a better floor out of him. So that's fair. Um, at that point, I might just take a flyer on Brandon Cooks though, but again um, – Brandon Cooks, you don't know what he's going to do with the Rams. And for the past few years, he's just been – he hasn't been a steady producer every week. So, uh, But going to the next receiver, which we talked about, Manuel Sanders, who's also 31. Or, um, I was reading off of Roto World. Uh, if you guys get a chance, if you're like a newer uh, – if you're newer to fantasy football, a good person to read from is Evan Silva. He's pretty, pretty knowledgeable. And he's someone I like reading a lot from. Um, he uh, posted in there that – because and we're gonna hit also um, Cortland Sutton, who they uh, drafted, but because they did uh, draft him and he's a big outside receiver, um, Emmanuel Sanders is gonna be getting a lot more slot work. And from Keenum last year, his go-to receiver was Adam Thielen. Digs who, too, uh, man, hopping in and out. He he loves the slot. the slot. So and was targeted by Keenum, right? So. And Keenum loves hitting his slot uh, receivers, so that could also boost up, I think, um, Emmanuel Sanders. So I think where Emmanuel Sanders is going, which would be uh, in the beginning of the eighth round, and I know that you guys kind of talked about this last week with the Jordy Nelson, Randy, uh, Randall Cobb, and where all these guys were falling. That's where Emmanuel, San- Emmanuel Sanders kind of falls, and I think would be better value than for you to reach for Demarius Thomas. So I think he'd be an even safer, Yeah, and I think that's value. kind of been the case the last couple of years. We look for the value in Sanders, the ceiling with Thomas, and I think they're both kind of eroding. So it's uh, I like your take, Don. That's an interesting one. I didn't uh, even really think about that too much, mm-hmm. but um, – I guess I didn't really think about Sutton too much. They did take him uh, eighth pick, second round at SMU, and he's a big dude, big possession receiver, um, contested balls probably. So they're going to have two big guys on the outside with Thomas and uh, Sutton. And then Sanders said, yeah, he'd run free across the middle. So hopefully the thing with Sanders is he hasn't been able to stay you know, healthy for a full 16 games. And when he does, he's – very inconsistent and you can't really depend on him to be a productive guy in your lineup. So that's where I kind of think that's where his value is going away. And I just, I think I'm going to try to see if he slides even further than that. I don't know. Um, I, I agree that he's a value, but I just don't know how valuable, how valuable he will be uh, depending on where you get him. He's definitely in an interesting position. I think this is probably one of the more interesting uh, spots of where receivers go. Um, ahead of him is Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods, and Randall Cobb. That's all from about mid to late seventh round to beginning of eighth. And then right behind him, though, is Jordy Nelson, Jamison Crowder, Devontae Parker, Robbie Anderson, and Cooper Cup. And, and then Marquise Goodwin and Alan Hearns. So, I mean, this is a very interesting lineup of receivers that you're about to go and this is all literally from about the end of the seventh round all to the beginning of the of this uh ninth so um it's a big bunch there so you're you're obviously flipping a coin in that section so if you're going for Emmanuel sanders you are going to be taking him over a few of these guys that could have a little bit more value yeah and um some of those guys it's it's funny because there's a wide spectrum of dudes there and i I think it becomes a preference kind of deal so you're going to have to go with the flow of your draft that these guys kind of maintain their adps because you're looking at the older guys like Sanders and Jordy and the younger guys like Parker, Crowder, uh, Robbie Anderson, and Goodwin. So you're going to have to make some choices mm-hmm. there. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll get into that uh, when we hit on the other guys. We're even talking about uh, Jordy Nelson on the the next podcast. So we'll touch on that there. It's just uh, becoming a risk-reward, um, depending on what you think these guys will do in their new places or in their new roles. So um, it's yeah. really depending. I, 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 I- what I could say is uh, the Denver Bronco receiving core is not going to be the sexy picks of the year. I can get behind that for sure. They're the opposite of sexy. They are ugly. I don't even know what to call them. It's just not, not They're good. They're just like, meh. Like, 
their their names hold value, but it's just like we don't know what's going to yeah. go on. You got you got older declining receivers with a journeyman quarterback that had the best year of his career last year at a different team. They're kind of like uh, becoming the Jets. <laughs> they really are, man. Denver, you heard it here first. Denver Broncos is the Jets <laughs> of the West. Fucking woof, dude. Um, you have anything else on here with uh, with Emmanuel Sanders, uh, I, Cortland Sutton? Uh, uh, well, before I go out, do you have anything else? No, um, I think I think we got that pretty well, pretty good. Okay, uh, I think Cortland Sutton's a, kind of a fun one. You should like look out after for the preseason. Uh, they they he was the number number forty overall pick. Um, they really seem to like him. Uh, he does. He's got. He's apparently supposed to be a freak athlete. I mean, he's got. He's six three two eighteen. He's a big dude. So, um, someone to look after. He's going undrafted right now. I don't know if he's going to be drafted, but, uh, but someone to look forward to uh, in the preseason and beginning of the season uh, for uh, waiver wires, possibly. Um, yeah, I'm with you. It's an interesting, very interesting. Do we need to touch tight ends? I mean, I got the starter as Jeff Hornan. Yeah, Jeff Herman, uh, they have Jake Butt, and they drafted Troy Fumalgia. Fumalgi, G-E, something like that. doesn't matter. We're going to skip all those dudes. Who cares? We should uh, – Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about, like, uh, well-known receivers and saying, hey, they're not sexy, so I can only imagine what these tight ends are. Fucking butt ugly. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we can get to their uh, total – clusterfuck of running backs so we got cj anderson walking away uh going to the panthers and he's pretty much been one of their better players and a very consistent running back despite um i don't want to say limited chances because they have used him as a workhorse they just have used him inconsistently as a workhorse so um he still is leaving um 245 carries uh he left a thousand yards and yeah, he he did right on the ground in in a bad offense with a rough O line. So I think that speaks more to C.J. Anderson than it does to um, what the Broncos are able to do with their remaining pieces. So we got Devontae Booker, who is suspected to be the lead right now. Um, obviously, his his ADP is the highest, I believe. I don't know if Royce Freeman is beating him yet, yeah. but Royce Freeman is the rookie they drafted, and uh, everyone, of course, I've, I've got I've got the opposite. I heard Royce Freeman is uh, right now their week one starter. Oh. Or, um, well, I'm in on the depth chart um, so far. It's, gotcha. it's Booker, and that's pretty much all we can go off of right now. So I got Booker still leading that right now, and then Freeman might overtake him. I mean, that's what everyone's banking on. So everyone's always hot for these rookie dudes. but uh, And then we still have D'Angelo Henderson, who's been on the team for a little bit, and they do kind of throw him in the mix every now and then when they want to mix it up. And uh, it's it's – I don't know. It's just – I don't know. I can't tell what they're going to do, and obviously everyone's hyped up on – Freeman, and then Booker kind of becomes an interesting ad if you can get him later. So I'm not entirely sure what to do. Um, here's all I'll say is uh, history seems to repeat itself um, over there between, uh, say, like, no Sean Moreno, who actually ended up having one decent year out of them, and then uh, who was it? Uh, was it Ball? Oh, Monte Ball was the rookie that busted – and this Monte Ball, total another, mess. Uh, CJ Anderson didn't pan out the way they wanted to. Uh, he he was decent, but not that they want. And now, now again, here they go drafting another uh, Royce Freeman, um, which they. I mean, I, I'm reading here that uh, Elway said that he wants him to be Week One starter, a bell cow type. He's a big dude that had a great career at Oregon. Um, he ran a four five forty, and they're saying that he can do take one uh, the snaps from first down through third down. Um, but also Devontae Booker, I think – I mean, what I think from what I've read is Royce Freeman's going to be the starter. He's going to be the bell cow. And then Devontae Booker, who has, is not that efficient on uh, per carry with not even four yards carry, but he is per reception getting an almost nine yards a, a catch. I think it could be a one-two and then Devontae Booker in the three. Um, I can tell you Royce Freeman is going um, – as the 28th running back, he's going a mid round in the fifth for a 12 point PPR, um, 12 person PPR, uh, right after Lamar Miller, 
and Deion Lewis, and before Marlon Mack versus Devontae Booker is going all the way at the end of the 10th, behind Dante Foreman, Jamal Williams, and right before Doug Moore and then with Garrett Blunt. So there seems to be a big disparity, and I do definitely think that Freeman is going to be their man that they're they're set on. Yeah, man, I, it's just oh, it's so tough. Like, Don, would you be comfortable paying up fifth round for Royce Freeman? No, I mean, listen. Uh, like I said, uh, history seems to repeat itself there, so I don't know. There's a lot of uh, unqu- a, lo- a lot of you know questionable things going on with that offense. I think overall, I think they feel confident. I think um, it starts with Case Keenum, and I think he's going to be, be way better than a Trevor S- Simeon. So it's going to lighten up that offense quite a bit. Um, but again, I, I don't know too much about Royce Freeman yet. But they really are talking high about him. I wouldn't doubt if he actually did have a good season though. But um, I think it's going to be more shared than it, where the disparity is of over five rounds. I think Devontae Booker is going to get way more of a share than it's saying. Uh, I think Devontae Booker would, with obviously his efficiency uh, for per reception in a PPR league, that would be a good add in that 10th round. So, um, But I wouldn't be surprised if Royce Freeman actually has a decent year. So, I'm inclined to agree with the, the Booker the Booker stuff, Don. I, I really I really think he'll see the field more than people think, um, whether that be a 60-40 shared Freeman's favor. Like, that might not matter if it's if it's PPR and Booker's getting a lot of catches. And then 10th round value, yeah. that should, you know, that should return to you, no problem. Yeah. And, the, the and Freeman, remember, I, just, I just cannot pay up for that. Their offensive um, line is garbage, too. And he, he's kind of like, is, yeah, it's not great. And then, like, C.J. Anderson averaged 15.3 uh, carries per game. So, they, I, I imagine, you know... That they would tr- try to work Freeman into that kind of workload, and we just haven't seen that. It's not very trustworthy of the Broncos, so it's like that seems to be his ceiling, and might not be seeing third down or you know catching a lot of passes out of the backfield. So his his ceiling is limited, and at five uh, in the fifth round, I mean, I think that's you're probably taking him at his ceiling, and it's risky. Yeah. All right. So let's play uh, the name game here. Uh, ben. So I'm not going to even go with the guys ahead of him because I think you would definitely take Deion Lewis and Lamar Miller yeah. before him. Um, right behind him is Marlon Mack, who actually will probably will hit once we get that division. Uh, from what I've read so far, um, he's the man to go to for running back in Indy. Marlon Mack's behind him. Um, Tevin Coleman, Tariq Cohen, Kerryon Johnson, and Carlos Hyde. And Chris Thompson and Aaron Jones. So uh, Royce Freeman or Marlon Mack? I think I would go Mack. I I think I would rather get riskier with uh, an offense that I think could perform at a way higher ceiling than the Broncos could with if Andrew Luck is healthy. So I take the risk there with Mack. Okay, Royce Freeman versus a already set number two running back in the depth chart, Tevin Coleman. Um, never been a huge Tevin Coleman fan, so um, I think I would. I I don't want to take Freeman, though. But I, I think in this situation, for the name game's sake, I would take Freeman there. Okay. Royce Freeman or Walsh's beloved, Tariq Cohen? Man, I, he's not my beloved, so I think I would rather um, try Freeman out there. Okay. Royce Freeman or Ke- on Johnson out of Detroit? I do not trust Detroit, like, at all for a run game whatsoever. So I'm going to go with Freeman there. All right. Two – uh Two more. Okay. Carlos Hyde or Freeman? Give me some Carlos Hyde. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I've uh, already came out on the very first podcast, and I think Carlos Hyde is well undervalued, and I like him where he's at. Indeed. Um, and a Chris Thompson or Aaron Jones over um, via versus Royce Freeman? Um, at this point, we're so far away from their ADPs that I think it would have to be like kind of how my team would shake out for that answer. Yeah, but um, interesting. I do like Chris Thompson had a good year. Yeah, I think I do like those guys more, and they're more val- um, they're presenting more of a value than Freeman. So I think I would take either of those guys and wait and not take um, and not take Freeman where he's going at all. Yeah, they're about two full rounds behind him too. So very interesting uh, to see where he falls. That's someone you obviously have to keep an eye out for uh, during this preseason as well, and, and go from there. Um, but be wary of rookie running backs that uh, have a good preseason and it doesn't always pan out as well. Um, other than that, Vin, do you have anything else for uh, 
for Denver Broncos. Anything more, Devontae Booker and the running back? No, I th- before we uh, take yeah, I think we did all right. Kind of shit on them a little bit more than I thought we would because I was <laughs> doing the research. I was like, oh, they're not. They got some hope, and <laughs> we started talking just laying out. It's not. It's it's a grim outlook for the for the Broncos. I think. Yeah, I could just say, uh, you know what? Let's just circle back to they are the Jets of the West. They are definitely not sexy. I'm kind of. I feel like very bland and i wish i was wearing like a brown <laughs> shirt because i just feel blah right now after the first start of this of this podcast man i need more flair for especially if i'm gonna host you know oh, we got some flair coming though don you did the most research for the next team which is the the chiefs so that's a tease and uh i wouldn't say i want to say the most research but i did research it, so that's why i was like yo fuck walsh and shrek having to get the second part of this podcast i already have this shit already down and i never prepare so. right any research is more research than you would do at any given time right normally i don't have any it's normally just gut feelings and uh usually you just can't listen to anything i say <laughs> but uh for that i need to grab another beer we're gonna take a break auction draft is the best site for running your fantasy football auction league in 2018 You can sign up now and get on the list for launch by going to letstalkfantasyfootball.com forward slash auction draft. And we are back from our beer break. Um, We are going to start off with maybe, uh, I think this will definitely be more interesting with uh, a Kansas City Chiefs, Shrek's favorite. Um, There's a, there's a lot of, a lot of change. A lot of change. Obviously, ship out Alex Smith. They uh, now are going to have Pat Mahomes, who they drafted last year for, and uh, they also added a Mr. Sammy Watkins. So, offense is going to look new under uh, Mr. Andy Reid. I think that's one of our favorite guys that we like to talk about as well. So, uh, Vin, why don't you start me off with uh, Kansas City, and I'll just kind of follow suit here. Oh, sure, dude. Um, so, heir apparent, Patrick Mahomes, the second. We got coming in, and um, I don't know if people are overrating him or or what. I'm I'm really not sure. I'm not like totally in love with him. Like let's say Jimmy Garoppolo or something like that. Um, Mahomes has showed that he's a decent quarterback for sure. I think um, this season is going to definitely. Obviously, they're throwing him right in, so it's going to be a big judgment season. So I just. I don't think people are going to draft him. I think it's going to be more of the players around him that um, we should probably touch well, on. Not true. He could be. He could be dra- actually. He, so he, especially if we're looking at two QB leagues. Vin, he's number sixteen off the board for quarterbacks, right behind Ben Roethlisberger. Um, they have him over guys that have been viable options in the past. He's be, he's ahead of Jameis Winston, who we just read earlier that could face. Um, some uh, what you call it, a suspension for not, um, I guess, bringing up to everyone that he has grope allegations. So I guess he can get suspended for that. I don't know. Good job, Jameis, fucking that up. Um, and then also behind him is Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, which we had uh, rated high last year going into the uh, season, uh, ahead of Dak Prescott, ahead of Alex Smith. Um, so these are some of these guys. So two QB league. Uh, I think it's kind of surprising. It's 16th. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, leaning towards the overrating of uh, Patrick Mahomes so far, from what we've seen. Uh, sample sizes. Overrating or overrating or the support cast around him. I mean, he's got. Oh uh, yeah, still. but like to take him over those guys who have been mainstays, and I, I think pro- will probably outperform Mahomes. Uh, it's got to be the supporting cast. Um, it's just once you take out a guy like Alex Smith, who's so like. Despite not being explosive, Alex Smith was always consistent and great. And he did throw more than I think he's ever in his career last year with 505 pass attempts, which, you know, it's, you know, towards the top of the league now. Alex Smith had never done that before. So maybe mm-hmm. offense starts leaning that way. But Patrick Mahomes is still pretty green. So it's tough to trust. It's tough to trust. And I think people are um, kind of jumping in with both feet, and I'm not ready to. And I think that's why I think he's overrated right now. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 the group that in, in our league, the way it's set is, you know, none of us are really quarterback savvy. Um, we like to 
weight. So, I mean, it's it's a deep quarterback crew. Um, there's just so many of them. It's not if, – if you're a one-quarterback league, I, I just don't see Pat Mahomes being a drafted guy. I think he's some of that. Maybe as a, as a streamer would be a great streamer um, at some point, you know, depending on how he plays. So, uh, But – he is uh, 16th off the board. He does have a good supporting cast. So we'll see how he goes from there. Um, I think what I really want to talk about and, and gauge your opinion on is Sammy Watkins. dude. I think it's very interesting because I think Sammy Watkins is kind of like uh, – I mean Tyreek Hill is a, is a utility player as well, but Tyreek Hill is also that deep ball guy. But so is Sammy Yeah, Watkins. now they have two field stretchers and – Oh, I mean, Hill can do it all. He proved me completely wrong last year. I think he did fantastic. Uh, I completely overjudged him as someone who wouldn't be able to handle a full one workload, yeah, and he definitely did. He did everything. Yeah, he, he's Batman's utility, though. <laughs> he's, he's got it all, dude. Mm-hmm. But um, now that they have two guys yeah. that pretty much are capable of doing the same thing, their offense is pretty potent. But you just got to watch both of them. I mean, some people think Sammy Watkins is pretty washed, but – I don't know. I still, I still love Sammy Watkins. Did did what he was asked of on the Rams. Uh, had eight total touchdowns, but not much else. Uh, low catches, low yards. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that'd be a fair assessment. No, I completely uh, agree. Watkins I think he does he played his what he's doing right now. Uh, of, yeah, pretty much of what he's uh, what he's asked because he's had a you know injuries and whatnot. But I think Sammy Watkins is great. It's just going to be. Um, an interesting dynamic to see. I wish Alex Smith was still there because the Chiefs have never really had a solid number two, and Sammy Watkins is an incredibly solid number two for this offense, especially when you have Travis Kelsey, who's in the middle, pretty much running as their number one wide receiver all the time, despite being a tight end. So it's just they got a lot of weapons now. Yeah, I think I think Alex Smith could be a, a top ten. I wish, dude, I wish he was still there, but sadly, we get the uh, the gamble on Mahomes. Yeah. He ca- he catches the shit out of the stick, uh, Alex Smith. Um, but yeah, no, a very interesting uh, Sammy Watkins. Uh, before we obviously get into Tyreek Hill, but Sammy Watkins is going in. He's the seventh pick in the seventh round. Ahead of him is Pierre Garcon, Julian Edelman, even with the um, suspension, and Devin Funchess. Behind him is ex teammate Robert Woods <laughs> uh, for both teams. Um, Randall Cobb. Emmanuel Sanders, again, this is the round that we were talking about earlier. Randall Cobb, Emmanuel Sanders, Jordy Nelson, James Crowder, Devontae Parker. So it's a very interesting crew there. Uh, name, game, Sammy Watkins. Fan Robert Woods or Sammy Watkins? I would go Sammy. Randall Cobb, Sammy Watkins. Randall Cobb. Emmanuel Sanders, Sammy Watkins. Sammy. Jordy Nelson, Sammy Watkins. Uh, that's tough. I think I would. I think I'd go Jordy. I do too. Jameson Crowder, Sammy Watkins. Sammy. And Devonte Parker, Sammy Watkins. Sammy. Wow, oh, man. I, I, yeah. I, this just is showing me how much I love Sammy Watkins more than I actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like you know what, dude. I'm gonna hop on the Sammy Watkins train too. I like Sammy Watkins. I do too. It's um. I think you know what I think. Mahomes is gonna throw a fuck ton of interceptions because he's just gonna want to air it out to both Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill all, all year. Yeah, that's a good point too. They might just air it the fuck out and see a lot of targets. But the thing is, like Hill, Watkins, Kelsey, and then you know Kareem Hunt, they're all competing for targets, and that's just that's an elite cast of dudes and. It might be tough for Sammy. Like he could wind up like he was on the Rams, very inconsistent, not targeted often, but uh, could be reliable for touchdowns every so often. It's just uh, I could see how Watkins is like a pitfall. So I think our love is blinding us right now. But there's a lot to make your love even more to make your love even more blind and and and, and set it to a path where we don't need to go because it's just so early. But fuck it, why not? Um, as I was reading my Roto World, I was uh, Chiefs dot com. BJ Kissel wrote the connection between Patrick Holmes, and Mahomes, and Sammy Watkins is real. Now, <laughs> if that's not now if that's if that's not the intro to the next Nicholas Spark uh, <laughs> love book, I don't know what is love novel. Um, 
So I don't know. I, now I'm getting really excited. So uh, apparently Mahomes and Watkins are, you know, are a love interest and, and things are real. So I, I that makes me feel bad about talking good about Watkins now. I don't I hate like when the, the coach speak comes around and just beat writer stuff about connections. Like who gives a shit? I, I'm not buying that. Sorry, Don. I didn't mean to ruin your novel. Well, I guess I'll be the only one reading that one. <laughs> As usual. Poor, poor Don. <laughs> anyway, I, th- I, th- I think we've we've made our point on Sammy Watkins. Tyreek Hill, dude. Uh, he good. Very good. Batman's utility belt, man. Who needs Robin when you got Tyreek Hill? Uh, had a great year last year. He is going mid-third round. Uh, right behind Doug Baldwin, Adam, Adam Thielen, and Josh Gordon. But before that, Larry Fitzgerald, T.Y. Hillen, Stefan Diggs, uh, A. Rob, and Demarius Thomas section. I think that's fair. I, I like Tyreek Hill. Yes, that, I was going to say, that's pretty much dead on. I hope he doesn't move either way. Yeah, I think I, I would take Tyreek Hill over all of those guys. Even Stefan, I think the only one that would give, give me a little bit of Stefan Diggs, but I still think I would take Tyree Kill. But I do like a Doug Baldwin, Adam Thiel, and Josh Gordon before. Yeah, I might even like Hill over Gordon. I know Gordon's a freak and all, but no, nah, I like Gordon. He's a, he's gonna have a he, dude. Did you not see that picture of him? I know, dude. He's got muscles on things I haven't he's, seen before. He's, he's a freak, dude. He was out of the league for like two years, and look at what he did. Yeah. He still had like. Just a, 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 a above solid uh, play last year. Like, it was, it was crazy, and he's huge now, dude. Uh, Josh Josh Gordon's gonna. Uh, I'll take Josh Gordon <laughs> over Tyree Kill. But I, I, you know what? I wouldn't argue. Like if someone's like, I'll take Tyree Kill over Josh. Gordon. Okay, okay. Like, I, I wouldn't argue. But I think Josh Gordon. I honestly think Josh Gordon's upside is actually higher than Tyree Kill's. That is fair. That's fair, Don. Very, very Dude, fair. Josh Gordon, I mean, look what he did before he got caught, man. He he was like the number one wide receiver on the shittiest of Browns teams. Well, not shittiest because they went undefeated but, or, or defeated, but there was no there was no one there. So anyway, uh, that's where uh, Tyreek Hill lands. Uh, do we need to go on where Tyreek Hill is where he should be? He's a freak. And like yeah, he's, he, the thing with Hill is he's no longer one-dimensional for me. Like you kind of proved it last year. He can He's capable of running intermediate routes, short routes, and obviously he's always a threat to take it all the way to the house despite what kind of pass it is. So I think Hill is uh, on the safer side, an elite talent, and I think he's a good pick going right where he is. Yeah, I like it a lot. That's the first uh, guy we've seen that I've liked exactly where he is and wouldn't question around it. Um Cool, man. Other wide receivers that I've got is a Chris Conley and Demarcus Robinson. Obviously, none of them are really going um, drafted. Conley did have an Achilles injury at one point, but they're, he seems to be pretty healthy. Do you have anything on these guys or anyone that you think we should be looking for? Or No, it's their usual cast of um, the third string dude running around. Uh, you'll see them do impressive things because they do what they're asked of and they, they do it well sometimes. And mm-hmm. so you might see one of these guys catch a cool touchdown or do a cool play, but they are, they're gadget dudes for any read, and uh, that's, I think, what they're going to stay as. Cool, man. Um, let's talk about the position we care about most, running backs. Uh, take me away. Kareem Hunt, the anomaly of last year. Uh, as, as Walsh put it on the last podcast, the best running back in a four-game sample size of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's tough to go off of because um, there was that nine scoreless weeks for him, uh, weeks four to 13, and it was you know pretty tough on owners because uh, after the first two or three weeks, I think panic set in for them because they're like, I should have traded him high, which is always you know one of the – pitfalls of fantasy uh and it's i just it's it's tough to judge i don't know because i think i feel like the chiefs had a slump altogether as a team not just not just kareem hunt had a huge slide of six games um during these weeks where hunt wasn't performing well so i think the team was also at fault but he's obviously displayed immense talent uh captured fantasy hearts immediately so i think wherever he's going in drafts it's going to be higher than you think so it's it's going to be yeah, tough for me no, to sack up and take him, I think, especially with the new offensive change with Alex Smith leaving. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm a little um, worried. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't think it's more of ability worried more than like, in, like you said, I situational. Think just, what is Andy? Reed, what is Andy Reid planning on doing that week? You know what I Correct. mean? Correct. Um, also, I don't know why. I don't know why they wouldn't just game plan around Kareem Hunt because he's good. Yeah, he, but uh, the thing is, now they have Trakendrick West, Spencer Ware. Uh, they signed Damian and Kerwin Williams. So, dude, I think honestly, if if you had to, it's funny because I, I I actually listed all it's, that. Dude, it's crowded overall. Overall, I think in the league to have – if you have ranked all five backs on every team, I think they have the most stacked amount of like running backs in general. I mean all these guys have seen a lot of play. Yeah, Andy Andy needs his running backs and uh, he will fuck around with us sometimes, but he's always got his main guy, which is um, you know good and scary sometimes. So it's – obviously Kareem Hunt is going to take the lead here, but – there are guys behind him who can fill in and do things, so we will be seeing them more often than not, I think, um, on offensive possessions. So mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Kareem Hunt's snap count is way down, and it's just going to be something that we don't understand, but Andy Reid will be game planning for every week. So it's going to be tough to trust Hunt as uh, like to do what we saw last year. So I'm I'm really worried. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very fair. Uh, Andy, Andy Reid is always one of those coaches that throws a wrench in, in your game plan. Kareem Hunt's not the first play, fan, or for fantasy wise, not the first player to be affected by Andy Reid. Um, so I know you guys kind of did a, a rundown of running backs and, and or not running backs, um, rundown of who's your first overall pick, which kind of led to a lot of these guys. Um, but behind Mel, uh, behind Kareem Hunt is Melvin Gordon. Odell Beckham, Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Julio, Michael Thomas. Is there any of these guys that you would take over Cream Hunt if you're in that ninth position of the first round? Um, is there anyone that you would say, hey, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to go with uh, – I'm not going to go with that Cream Hunt. I don't want to deal with that. Don, you'll like this one. I like Melvin Gordon over Cream Hunt, and I like every single wide receiver pretty much after – like immediately after him too. Um, it's just – it's too – Risky when you can get an elite guy that's been there and done that. And I, I just like um, sp- specifically Melvin Gordon going right after him, I think is ridiculous because Gordon was fantastic last year. They should be better this year. Yeah. Um, hmm. I love Melvin Gordon and, and the Chargers are my AFC team to follow. Uh, I had Melvin Gordon for a few years in a row. Melvin Gordon was like very good. But I would rather like a Melvin if, – if he could fall to like my second – like if you go running back, running back, and you're like in the 10th spot. Or I would love Melvin Gordon to be like my – I think Melvin Gordon is the like the best number two running back because I think he's like – he always gets you a, a solid, you know, double digit, but it's never like – he's never going to have a, like a, a crazy breakout game really versus I think Kareem Hunt can do that. So I'm kind of teetering on that. But I think the most interesting thing is because it's so running back heavy this year. Like I still think it's so wild that Odell Beck, where Odell Beckham and like Julio Jones are landing. Yeah, that's uh, and also me and Walsh touching that in our first podcast this year is just it's so wide receiver rich on the back end of the first and deep into the second that it's hard to justify going so early on a guy like I mean Kareem Hunt is probably a lot of people's yeah. guy for sure. So I get why you would take him. He's an immense talent. Did wonderful things last year. It's just like passing up these guys. You might regret it yeah. later. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't hate where he's going. I, I still, and I don't want to knock Saquon Barkley guys. I think he's so good, but like I still like my like a cream hunt over Saquon Barkley. It, it all dep- again. It's Andy Reid uh, gameplay. So I like where he is right now. I gotta mess with that around more. But I will say, fun fact: like I did a mock draft. Um, our main league is a ten team league, so that's why I started off with. Um, I do like to do 12 teams because I'm in a lot of 12 team leagues too. And I think that's what a lot of people are in, but uh, just for you 10 team leaguers. And, and for us, like uh, I took a Deandre Hopkins and, and we're in a PPR league. And my second round pick was Julio Jones. So I had a Deandre Hopkins, Julio Jones back to back, which I thought was like insane. So it's kind of crazy what this first round's doing with all these running backs. So be wary. Um, but just remember Odell yes, back and Julio Jones are right there. So, Crazy stuff. Uh, we won't we won't teeter too far away from our AFC West there. But uh, Kareem Hunt, I like where you are right now. Um, we'll, we'll go from there. Oh, I did want to bring up with Kareem Hunt though. Um, do we need to start worrying about Kareem Hunt and 
off the field issues. Now, I yeah, know that it's all right. He just he punched a dude. It's fine, man. And he also was accused of shoving a 19 year old woman in back in February. Well, what did she say to him? Apparently, it was she was in the wrong. <laughs> Kidding, Don. Jesus Christ! No, I didn't actually, even know no, that. No, actually, no, yes, but she, actually, it was where they're saying <laughs> that she she might have said something racist. Um, and there were racial slurs, but since like, and this is like the last day of February. So since March, yeah, March is after February. Good. Good job done. Since March, there's been two accusations of, of Kareem Hunt getting physical. Like now, does that start to become a thing where you start to possibly worry about? Um, maybe like deep, deep subconscious, but I wouldn't let it affect your draft strategy unless anything comes to an actual thing. Uh, before the draft. Just, some, just something fun to think about, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, so fun. Oh, so fun legal troubles. Uh, anyways, we've talked plenty of Kareem Hunt. Um, other running backs, we, we said they have a stacked backfield. Um, the only other one that's being drafted right now is Spencer Ware, who just came off of um, an injury. He's, he's Which is pretty much a handcuff. Yeah. Um, he's going very late, second pick of the 14th round. Is this all fair? I mean, behind him is like a Bilal Powell um, and like a Kenneth Dixon, and only one be- only people before him is like Peyton Barber. Uh, Kel- yeah, what? A, it's Elijah it's Macker. very whatever. You know what I mean? It's I, th- I think yeah, it's people taking Kareem yeah, Hunt and him. I, that exactly. So I, I think that's fair. I think you should cuff him, but yeah, I think you should cuff him if you if you get Kareem Hunt with a Spencer. Ware, that's cool, uh, but he goes where he goes. Now. So other than that, do we have anything else on running backs with Kansas City? No, and I think we could just, you know, wrap up their other best position, Travis Kelsey, and I could say that he should be drafted number one tight end over Gronk, and I think that should be acceptable at this point. I actually think that the only one that could be arguable is Zach Ertz with Travis Kelsey. Oh, so you're kicking Gronk out of the top two? I think Gronk is the best, but Gronk is just always injury-ridden where I would – more teeter towards if I'm going to go, if I'm going to reach for a tight end, if I'm going Kelsey or Ertz. Okay. I don't want to mess around with the ground injury bullshit. Yeah. Also, um, I mean, they always get it done, but just some weird shit coming out of the Patriots camp. It's just all shit anyway, but I just, Travis Kelsey has proved it. I think, uh, Mahomes will learn very quickly that Travis Kelsey is always open and very good. So, yes, I agree. Um, I actually think I might have an edge on Zach Ertz. I think because Zach Ertz has proved with his backup, Nick Foles, and, uh, that he had a great uh, year. But also, you know, once Wentz comes back too, Zach Ertz is that guy too. So I actually think I like Zach Ertz a little bit better. But I think it's Travis Kelsey and Zach Ertz are my two that I'd be reaching for. Uh, split hairs on that. Yeah. Uh, basically, the point we're trying to make is that all of these guys will probably be going in the uh, mid third, and that's what you have to pay up for. And if you're comfortable doing that, it's it's acceptable. They're uh, the elite guys, and you won't have to worry about it later. And I think uh, all three of those guys are safe, good, elite, and you kind of can't choose wrong. But I think uh, I would rank them Travis Kelsey first. Don's leaning yeah, towards the air. Um, yeah, especially, I mean, two things you'd be looking at. Obviously, one is. After the top five, they really trickle down really bad. So if you want like a, a number one at your tight end where you're going to have that advantage over everyone else, that's where you do the reach. Or if you have leagues that are two tight ends and you really want to capitalize on that, that's where you go with those guys. But Oh, um, indeed. Yeah, man, that's that's what we got. So um, other than that, we've just wrapped up Kansas City. Do you have anything else in Kansas City before we hit some uh, reader questions? No, man, let's hit, the, let's hit the questions. All right. First reader question here is from Tony. Uh, Tony says that he's in a half point PPR keeper league and he needs to choose two keepers. There's no penalty to keep. His choices are Deshaun, Wat- Deshaun Watson, Josh Gordon, Derrick Henry, Corey Davis, Cooper Cup, and Kenny, Ga- uh, Kenny Galladay. He said he's torn and he needs to know which two he's going to choose. This is tough, man. It's He nailed, uh, you know, drafting the, the guys that have the highest potential, I think. Uh, all these guys have room to obviously grow and some of them are even going to be awesome this year. So um, I would take, I would keep, I'll keep Derek Henry and I would keep, 
it's so tough for me to keep Josh Gordon because of his like off field stuff, but I think I'll, I'm going to go with him. Take the upside, and then you got Josh Gordon, who's just a freak, and then Derrick Henry, who's entering the league finally as an RB one. Yeah, um, I agree with Josh Gordon 100, percent and I'm torn between the Derrick Henry and Deshaun Watson. I'd love to know where these rounds are going, or or how your your keeper league works. I think he's saying you pick two people and they're just on your team and then uh, you just kind of go for it from there. Yeah, I, I'm kind of torn. I actually really like Sean Watson this year. I think it was unbelievable what he did before he got hurt last year uh, with fantasy points. Like he was just – it was astronomical numbers and I, I think he's going to have a great year with DeAndre Hopkins. So I actually – I'm a believer with him. Uh, I'm cool with the Deshaun Watson uh, pick, but I also do like the Derrick Henry Um but I'll split it. I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson and Josh Gordon because Derrick Henry has Deion Lewis on his uh, tail. True. Very true. But also remember, quarterback is easily replaced fantasy-wise. There you go. So, Tony, definitely keep Josh Gordon. It is up to you, sir, on what you'd like to do with Deshaun Watson and Derrick Henry. Uh, we're going to go with Corbett11 from Instagram. What do you make of Tyreek Hill's stock with Patrick Mahomes at the helm? Uh, Vin, I think we answered that. I think that was like our our easiest one to go over was Tyreek Hill. Yeah, he's arguably the the safest guy for him. I think uh, uh, as as we talked about, he, he can he's done it all: deep threat, short, intermediate. He's very good, and uh, we'll definitely see his targets, game plan all the time. So I think Hill is is great, and we said he's he's we're very comfortable paying for his price now. I think I uh, was at mid third three oh seven. So that's totally yeah. fine. Don't go any higher. Don't go any lower. He is perfect to where he is going. Uh, last one from Josh. Can Kareem Hunt repeat his hot start from last year and turn it into consistency? I'm worried that without a few big, without the few big games last year, he isn't as flashy as people think. So again, Vin, I think this is another one that we uh, have kind of answered. Yeah, no. Uh, it really. Josh is. A, it yeah, he's he's totally right because the hot start changes everybody's opinion, and then he dies for nine weeks, pretty much, and that's. You know, a damper on his season, but he still performed very well uh, in between uh, outside of those weeks. So I think, um, yeah, I think I was more done. But there's definitely call- yeah, I I agree there, Vin. Um, other than that, do we have anything else here we're- with uh, any of the questions before we uh, cap off? All right. Well, that is the uh, first part of AFC West. Um, check us out on Let's Talk Fantasy Football.com. Find us on Alexa, Google Home, Skill Store, and Get Mocking. Uh, that's Vinny Gonzalez. Cool. I am the DON. Be good, fam. This has been Let's Talk Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. 